that really just make your workflow so much easier within the program. So um, let me see if I'm logged in. I sure am. So once again, for those of you who weren't here for yesterday, a quick little recap before we get going. When you open up Clip Studio, and I do not get paid to talk about this program, okay? All this information I'm giving you is because, you know, I want you to go out and make the arts, and this is a very hand-holy program that can look scary, but I'm going to take you through the guts of it. So first thing when you open Clip Studio, it takes you to um, Clip Studio right here. This is your dashboard. This is like the home screen to the video game. Think of this as your studio. This is your filing cabinet. This is where all of your work is stored, where all your files are stored. So uh, this is just some of the stuff I have stored on this particular little iPad right here. But once again, when you get Clip Studio, it comes with an account under your name. And that account comes with 10 gigs of storage and you can see up there at the very top how much of that gigs I have used up. I'm at 8.07 used at this point so I love the cloud is the thing. So and of course you can delete things off that cloud as you need them to free up space. Hanoi is very simple. So anyway this is the opening section and we're going to launch the actual drawing program end of it now and for that I'm just going to go up to this little spot right here, return to paint. And that's going to take you to your drafting desk where you're actually doing your work. And I'm going to click on that. Boom. Okay, so now I'm at my drafting desk. So think of this space over here as your drawing table where you put down your paper, whatever it is you're going to work on. And wherever it is you want to set up your brushes and your controls, such as what we talked about yesterday, you can dock those however you need them on top of your drawing surface, if that makes sense. Cool beans. So that was all yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about some of the really fun features of this program. So let me open up real quick, file, open. I just want to da, 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 show you all a file that I was working on. And I'm going to show you how the tools that this program comes with really helped make what looks like a complicated piece a lot less complicated. So I'm going to show you some pieces real quick. Let me find them. If I can find them, that'd be good. Dip, 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 dip. What did I do with them? They're in here somewhere. Fan art, is that it? Um, this will work. Well, actually, it's not one before. Sorry, y'all. Pump dump. Actually, this will work just fine. I'm going to go ahead and. Boop. We'll open this. Okay, so this is a piece I did the entire thing on the iPad in Clip Studio. This is from Our Flag Means Death for any of the people in here who have completely lost their personality to that show like myself. <laughs> this is what that is. So, within this piece, uh, the, it looks like there's a lot going on. And let me see if this is the layered file. It's not, but that doesn't matter. I'll show you on another file in just a minute. Uh, get out of here. No, there we go. Okay, so. In this piece, there's a couple different things going on. First and foremost, the whole thing's done in Clip Studio. Hooray! But uh, there are teacups in their hands. I'm going to zoom in on those real quick. Now, the beauty of these teacups, wow, that's pixelated. Uh, the beauty of these teacups, file, open, let me find. The, let's see, is this in flats? Quick. This is the companion piece. Real quick, I want to show you something with that before we go back to those teacups. It's opening, it's big. Okay, so the companion piece, same characters, different scene, right? Cool beans. If you notice, the face on this character, I said zoom. Oh, I don't want to. Okay. The face on this character here is the same face here. It's the same face. Copy, flip. Did I color them differently? Yes. Yes, I did because different nighttime, different color, different light sources, yes. But saving time, all I did was adjust what direction his hair was flipped, because his hair parts one direction. Uh, on the final piece, his mouth is actually open. That's not in this one. That's okay. But what I want to talk about is time saving, okay? Now, when you've got a digital sketchbook like this, I want to, real quick, let me pull up in one more file. Open. Do, 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 do. Where is it? I'll find it. I know it's here. Ba, 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 ba. Is it in here? Yes. Let's open this. So before I did any of these, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Corrupted. Oh, we don't like that. Oh, we don't like that at all. Actually, it'll still work. No, it won't. It's a huge file. The thing is, I wanted to show you this 
massive file. So you can see how many layers it actually takes to make a final piece. Good God. A lot going on here. Blah, 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 blah. Why is this not doing the thing I want to do? I don't know why I did that. Okay, long story short, here's the deal. If this looked nice, I'd be able to show you, but for some reason it's not better than that. But I did this piece first, right? And it had a ton of stuff going on, right? And I got really tired of drawing tentacles and like little suckers on the tentacles and blah, 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 blah. And when it finally came down to adding things like the teacup, I knew I'd probably be using this teacup again because within that particular show that I'm making this fan art from, that uh, teacup is very symbolic. It's very important to the show. So what did I do? I drew a teacup over here in what I call my sketch pad. This is a file that I keep that is literally just what I call the sketch pad. And within the sketch pad, I have folders set up in my layers. And every one of those folders has a title so I know where to drop things I might use again into my sketch pad. So I've got a folder on top there that says assets. Anytime I create a drawing and I think, you know what? I know this is just a little background element and I can use this later for something else. I'm gonna go ahead and save that to my little sketch pad over here. I'm gonna put it in my assets folder. So if I open up this folder, let me show you. There we go. So there's the teacup. Now, how many times do you think I drew these teacups? One, exactly. I drew the teacup one time, copy, paste. Now I colored them individually, but I didn't sit there and waste my time making line art. I drew the cup once, saved it inside of my little sketch pad in the folder that I know I'm gonna keep stuff I might use again in. Lasso, copy, paste it where I need it. Now notice how this cup is a different shape from that cup, right? That's okay because back in here, I just copy pasted and changed the shape of the cup how I needed it. And the way I did that is by using one of my most favorite tools and that is the transform tool, okay? So let me just give you a quick little demonstration here. So let's go back to this real quick. You see this tattoo that's on this character's arm right here? Mm -hmm. Now I sat here and I drew out like the crosses and like these little bits that are kind of hanging on the edges. But this big snake scale, snaking across his arm, do you really think I sat there and drew in every single one of those scales? Absolutely not. <clears throat> Work smarter, not harder. Scrooge McDuck, okay? So, to save time for myself and my future self, because Let's be frank, I'm not gonna stop drawing these gay pirates for a hot minute, okay? This is my hyperfixation, this is where mama lives now, okay? So I know I'm gonna be using that a lot in the future. So back in my sketch pad, what I did, treating this just like a sketchbook, is I came in here, and let me find this layer, here we go. I made the snake pad, you see that? Now to get it to flow around his arm, first of all, this is how I made the pattern. Let me show you that real quick. Notice that purple line that's going through the center? With this program, it comes with a wonderful tool that is line of symmetry. Let me show you real quick what that is. I'm just gonna give myself a new layer here. I'm gonna go over, let me get out of the way. I'm gonna go over to my toolbar on this <coughs> side over here. Now those of you who were here yesterday, you saw that like this is generalized where the tools live. These are my favorite tools. These are my babies. I put them there for me. And this is where you control those tools is in these two pot panels up here, the so, uh, tool property and sub-tool properties. So to get my general you know, rulers, I'm just gonna click down here on my rulers in the main uh, Photoshop-y look at toolbar. So I'm gonna click that ruler. And what's gonna happen here, is up here in my sub-tool sub uh, control panel up there, it's gonna give me a list of all the different rulers available in this program. Now this program gives you all kinds of different rulers. Uh, there's a perspective ruler that's really cool. It gives you like two, one, or three point perspective. You just lay out where you want your vanishing points to be and then just start drawing lines and it all comes out in perspective. It's really cool. But real quick before we get too deep into that, I want to show you the symmetry ruler. 
Now that's going to be the one there on the bottom that's highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop down to my tool properties right here. That's where we control the tool we just picked. In there, notice how it says number of lines? Two. Okay? That will give me a mirror image. Okay? So let's go ahead and just drop that line down. I'm just going to draw a line down, drop it. That purple line represents that line of symmetry. So now, if I were to pick like a marker, whatever I do on one side automatically happens on, happens on the other. See that? Mm, so if you're drawing something that's like perfectly symmetrical, that's a massive time saver. So to make that tattoo, let me pick a different uh, pen here. Just a nicer pen. Okay. For that tattoo, all I did was come in here, make little scales like that, make another scale like that, make another scale like that. Let's say that looked like the scales. I know I'm rushing, but there's a lot I want to show you guys. So, once I got one line, do you think I went down and drew another line? Absolutely not. Work smarter, not harder. So instead, what I'm going to do is grab my lasso tool, my marquee tool, lasso tool. I will lasso that bad boy. I will edit, copy, edit, pasta, and then all I'm going to do is move that bad boy below it. What? <laughs> then, let me go ahead and say, okay. I'm going to go ahead and clear out that loop. Now, if I look at my layers, now on top you see I've got my first little line of scales and then my second sitting right above it, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of having a ton of layers, what am I going to do? I'm just going to highlight those two layers and then I'm going to go over to my layer button up here at the very top. I'm going to click layer and what I'm going to do is merge selected layers. So both of those layers that I have selected which are the two layers with scales on. I'm just going to merge those selected layers together. So now it is one layer. See that? So to build up the scales, all I got to do now is go lasso, yoink, edit, copy, edit, paste, drag it down. Oh my goodness. And look at that. You multiply, you multiply, you multiply. And before you know it, you're dropping 20, 20, 20 kind of thing. Lots and lots of scales. So that is how I created that symmetrical scale piece. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to really play with it. Let's say, okay, and get rid of that. Oh, real quick, this bar up here right above the uh, actual file tabs, this guy right here, that comes with a bunch of stuff loaded into it. It's just what the programmers think are going to be the most useful tools for you. But you can add and remove whatever you need from that quick toolbar right up there. So that thing, you can absolutely customize your most favorite like actions like save or like clear this area or, you know, uh, transform. I've got a little transform button right here that's flood filled. That's clear the entire space. So if I have something like selected and I hit that little uh, starburst thing right here, whole thing just goes away, bye, never happened. If you want to just like start with a fresh page, just hit that button, bam, everything's clean. So anyway, these are just the ones I like to have. You can put whatever controls you want to access the quickest up there. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of these. I'm going to go back to assets. I'm going to go ahead and edit, copy, edit, paste, just so we have a, uh, oh, I did a bad, sorry, hold on, edit, copy. Edit. There it is. Okay. So, now that I've got a copy of these scales, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the ruler off because we don't need it at this point anymore. We've made a symmetrical thing. To turn the ruler off, all I'm going to do is come up to this little button right here. You see how the ruler's sitting right there? Now, with that, if you want to keep things symmetrical from layer to layer to layer to layer to layer, you can absolutely have this ruler on a single layer and have it affect every single layer you use. Uh, just going in there, if I click that, it brings this up, show in all layers. Meaning that if I had this little spot clicked right here, it would remain mirrored no matter how many layers I'm building on top of it until I say don't do that anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah? So that's a great little tool, like if you want to have, um, you want to save time coloring in something that's symmetrical, you just make sure that's clicked, make a layer beneath the uh, line layer, and just start coloring, and that way you only have to color one side of the thing. Really, really handy little quick tool. But for the purposes of my demonstration right now, I'm going to go ahead and just click off. No! Why? Quit saving, I don't need you to save. Uh, Stop it. 
It's got a lot of big files on it, sorry y'all. It's thinking. But why though? But why though? But why though? Good God. Come on, iPad, seriously, buddy. This is the longest I've ever had to wait for anything. <clears throat> he got stage fright. It did, he got stage fright. <laughs> Poor little guy, there he goes. I don't need you to save this, but thank you for the effort. I really do appreciate that. Okay, good. So, uh, let me go back to this layer real quick. Okay. There it is. Okay, cool. So now the ruler is turned off. Now, if I were to come back on top of this layer now with, like, say, a colored pencil, because there is no more ruler, see how that's not symmetrical anymore? Boom. That's how you turn off the symmetry. You just turn it off. Now, boop. So, now that I've got my pattern, like I said over here on, uh, where was it? This one? Yes. Over here on his arm, that exact same just flat shape that I made with the scales, what I'm going to do is get it to rotate around the arm. Now to do that, I'm just going to give you a quick little demo of one of my most favorite tools on here, and that's the transform tool, okay? Now the transform tool, we all know basic transformation. I just click my little transform tool right here, but if you don't have that button set up, all you got to do is go to edit, and then right down here in edit, you've got uh, transform right there. You see that guy? And if I were to click transform here, it brings up everything that's actually already in that sub-tool property, the thing where you control it. So there's two ways to do that. And everything I sell on the stage, by the way, is just how I do it. There are a million ways to do everything. So keep that in mind. YouTube is your buddy. YouTube is your friend. Now, what I'm going to do, let's just click out of here. So over here is the exact same stuff that was just in that menu I clicked out of. Over here, this is the important stuff, right here. So this little drop down menu right here, it's set to scale and rotate right automatically. So if I came in here right now, I could rotate it, I could just change the size of it, I could do anything like that, right? So let's say I just rotate it and say, okay, make it a little bigger, okay. Um, when I like the transformation, all I'm gonna do is click that little check mark, go yay. If you don't like it, you click the X, no. It's just a toy. It's just a toy. The whole thing is literally just a toy, okay? So let's say I like it and I go, hooray, click. As soon as you say, yes, I'm happy, automatically, this will change back to the last brush you were using. That way you just keep rolling with your process. You don't have to stop and reselect your tool and redo your properties. It automatically goes back to the last tool. Now let's say I want this, like I said, the skin to wrap around his arm. Here's where it gets fun. I'm going to go back to my transform. I'm going to go back to the, what was that? Oh, didn't even need you. Get out of here. I'm going to go back to mode, and right here in this drop down menu, I'm going to click that. It has got scale, rotate, free transform, distort, skew, and perspective. Now, a lot of these we're already familiar with from like Photoshop or other art making programs. But I'm just going to show you free transform real quick. This nine times out of ten will get the job done for you if you need to fit something in a weird little space. Um, but literally, you just grab any of these little bars, and woo! Now that thing's coming at you like Star Wars logos. Mm -hmm. Why? That's crazy. Yep. But let's say this is not getting the job done because I want this to wrap around a dude's arm, right? So let me say, sure, that looks fun. Okay. Now there is, this is where, this is where the actual, you know, coming to the panel will help you because the magic trick is not located in, click, in this folder right here, okay? The magic trick is going to be back in edit, so I'm going to hit edit. Is it real or is it? Do what? Oh, there's some outside. Okay. <laughs> okay, edit. I'm going to go back to transform. And this is the magic trick. So once again, here are all the same stuff, blah, 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 flip, flip horizontal, flip vertical, blah, 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 whoa, hey, what's up? How you doing, baby? Mesh transform. This is your buddy. This is your friend. So I'm going to hit mesh transform. Now look what happens. Now, instead of just having like one, two, three, four, five, six points that we can pull that shape around in, now, We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine areas to play with. 
separate areas. So to get this shape to wrap around that dude's arm, what I did was take this, copy it, paste it on top of the colored figure. I went ahead and colored the figure, didn't draw the tattoos on, those came last. Once the figure was colored, I pasted this flat on top, and then all I did was start pulling at all these little boxes until it all started to flow and rotate around the arm how I needed it to. See this? Ah, ah, yes. Ah, hit OK. And boom. See that? So just using mesh transform. You don't have to sit there and go, okay, so if this was doing this and I have this many on this side, this many on that side, ah, forget about it. You just draw whatever shape you need, throw it onto the character, mesh transform until it looks like it's flowing over the shape of the muscle or whatever it is you're putting it on. Boom skis. Done. That's it. So going back to this example over here, over here, I'm sorry this is so pixelated, y'all. This is the one I put on the internet so nobody would steal it. Um, going back to this one, you can see like some parts are a little smush smush, some parts are a little smush. No one will ever notice if I don't point it out. Shut up, right? As my dearly departed godmother, Miss Winifred Sproul, used to often want to say, on a galloping horse, it'll never be noticed, darling. So, on a galloping horse, it'll never be noticed. So, this was like a combination of three or four. Yeah! <laughs> this was a combination of like three or four different copy and paste just to get the effect of it flowing around his arm. Over here on this side, I'll tell you right now, I just kind of uh, transformed a curve on this side, and a lot was hanging out over here on the outside. Was I worried about it? No, because the only part I'm actually concerned about is what's going to be on the skin. Once the part that was on the skin looked good, I just literally erased what I didn't need that was hanging out outside of it. It's not going to be in the final piece. It don't got to look good. It's just the part you're working on. And that's literally just the mesh transform tool. Once I was happy with how that tattoo looked, I went ahead and combined that layer with the line art, and that way I could come back with a soft airbrush and add a little bit of that glow and highlight and some shadow that you see on it so it doesn't just look like black line work on top of finished artwork. Does that make sense? Yeah? Cool beans. So that's the first tool that I think is really, really beneficial. Also being able to have things like this teacup, I only drew it the once, but I was able to absolutely use it a bunch of different times, so keep that in mind. Also, um, this guy's face is the same face over here. Now, in the final image, I did change it so his mouth is actually open, uh, but it's literally the same face. Is that cheating? No. No, it's not. There is only one form of cheating in the world of art, and that is straight up plagiarism, like straight up tracing <clears throat> copying. That is it. Okay? Everything else is literally up for grabs. It's called stealing with your eyes. Okay? Utilizing you the tools you are given. Do what? Utilizing the tools you're given. Utilize the tools you are given. And if you see an artist out there and you're inspired, and you're like, oh my god, I really love the way they use like lime green to get this effect. Use that lime green. Do it. There is nothing new under the sun, and I guarantee you, every artist out there that you like has stolen an idea from another artist they like, okay? It's a communal thing. Just don't ever trace or straight up plagiarize, but steal with your eyes, okay? That is perfectly acceptable. That is how we as artists learn and grow and take from each other. It's part of our community experience, okay? Uh, so an artist using their same art to make another dollar on a different print, that is not cheating. That is working smarter, not harder. So keep that in mind, you guys. So, so like with this, uh, this little uh, the, the lantern right down here, uh, I knew I was going to have to like hang some more of these bad boys. So there's another one there, and there's another one there, and there's another one there. How many times do you think I drew that lantern? Once. Once, exactly. All I did was maybe hit this one with a tiny bit more color here, that one's smaller, a little bit of a rotation, a little bit of a glow coming out from the bottom. Tiny little things you do once you copy and paste it just to make it slightly different from its neighbor. It's not cheating. You drew it. Now all you're doing is playing with it. Okay? So keep that in mind. Now this cannon over here, that is also over here in my sketch pad. 
So if I come back to my assets, da 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 here we are. And there it is. So there's the cannon. And I knew that if I'm into this pirate show, I'm probably going to have to have more cannons in my near future. So I made sure to save the cannon drawing so that I can use it later. So I literally drew the cannon, inked it in my sketch pad, and then took it over here. Not that one. Here we go. Took it over here. Notice how much of it is actually gone. See that? Am I worried about it? No! Absolutely not! Why? Because it's already drawn. No big deal. It's got stuff in front of it. It's got this wood in front of it now. It's fine. It's good. It's fine. That? Same cannon! Same cannon. I just literally just pasted it, flipped horizontal. Boom. Done. Work smarter, not harder. And working digitally, that's a lot easier than if you were to sit there and go, okay, I drew this. Okay, here we go. Try to copy the exact same thing physically on the other side of the paper. With our digital technology, y'all, the old masters would have literally killed to have the ability to work this quickly, okay? So, yada, 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 yada. Uh, what else do I want to show you? Okay, now, Cliff Studio Paint, back in the day, was called Manga Studio, okay? Like 20 years ago. And all it was was a black and white manga making program, okay? And like when you zoomed in, you had big old pixely lines, big old chunky lines. It was a very limited software, but it was still a workhorse. Now because this giant beautiful illustration <coughs> program was once a comic making software, it is still a comic making software. So, if you're into the idea of making your own comics, I'm about to show you exactly how easy this program makes comic drawing, okay? This is going to blow your minds. So, first things first, let me go ahead and close out of these. Uh, do not save. <laughs> and we'll keep Sketchpad for now. <coughs> well, let's make a new file. So, let's say I'm starting a new file in the software, right? I'm going to hit New. This is what's going to come up. Now this is going to say, okay, what do you want to make? And it gives you these little icons at the top because it's a video game. It's literally giving you pictures instead of words. It's a video game, right? <laughs> so we can do an illustration. You know it's an illustration because it's got a pretty flower. Uh-huh, yeah, pretty flower. Uh, you can do a long format web comic. See how that comic's kind of looping around on itself? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do one of those web comics where you literally just scroll like this, that's how you do it. That's how you make that. If you want to do a regular comic page, you got this guy right here. That's a regular comic page ready to go. Uh, this one right here, this is uh, my preset comic, uh, or my, this is the, I use a comic page instead of an illustration page just because I'm used to it from Manga Studio. But you can absolutely use either, it really doesn't matter. But this is where I have like my controls and my presets and everything. This is animation. This thing straight up animates. Were you ever like in love with the idea of doing like a hand-drawn animation? This thing does it. This thing absolutely is an animation program as well as an illustration program as well as a comic making program, okay? This thing has literally replaced Photoshop for me. I've opened Photoshop maybe once in the last year. This thing is a workhorse, and that is how you make animation. I've only played with it a little bit, and then I was like, and I gotta go back to getting paid. Okay, here we go. Now, so this is the first thing that'll open up when you make a new file. Let's say we wanna make a comic, right? So I'm just gonna click basic comic page. Okay, so first thing, you can either do a preset comic. In the presets over here, if I were to drop this down, it gives you all the international standard page sizes. You can do it in monochrome, AKA a black and white comic like manga or done in, right? Uh, you can do it in full color, and you got like 350 DPI, 600 DPI, good God. Oh my Lord. Um, for real, American comic standards are anywhere between 400 DPI and 350. There's really no reason to go any higher than that. Me, sometimes I do 600 if I'm doing a really big illustration. Why? Because I'm a freak. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a freak. But there really is no reason to go higher than 400, especially if you're doing comic book. That's the thing. So, uh, over here, binding finish size. Binding finish size. This is where you will adjust things like the height, the width of the page, um, your bleed width. That's important. The bleed on the edge of the comic, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. 
It's very important to know what size the bleed is, and if you're working with a publisher or if you're doing self-publishing, on the website it will say we work to this size bleed. Uh, make sure that you never, never, never put anything important outside of that line, and it will give you that line. I'll show you in just a second. Uh, resolution 350, basic expression, color, color. But if I want to do a black and white, all I got to do is click this and go, I want black and white or gray. Just whatever, right? So this is the easiest possible setup that has ever existed for any kind of comic baking software. This is ridiculously easy. Let's say, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm just going to click this. Sure, ain't have my lid in here. I'll see what happens. All right. Hold on. View. Crop mark. Oh, cancel. Never mind. Let's start a different one. File. New. That one. Okay. There we go. I just clicked whatever was preset on there. So, wow, this does not show that great on this screen. Here we go. You can barely see it on my iPad. I can really see it. You see these lines? Barely see these little ghost lines right here. And there's one right here. And there's a big blue one right here. And these little X's yeah. and these marks. That is the crop. That is the bleed. That is where the page will be cut when it gets printed. So if you're looking to have physical printed volumes, this is what you need to be aware of. And all those little numbers at the beginning, the bleed, the width, and all that, that is what it's talking about. And once again, if you're working with a publisher or you're doing self-publishing, whoever you're going through will have that information available. You literally just type it in when you set up the page. Boom. There's your lines. That's what's important. Now, the important thing is inside of, the, I know it's super hard to see, but this line right here and this line right here and right here, that is your live area. Okay? That is the most important part of the page. That is where your work is going to go, okay? This space out here, this bleed area over here, you never, 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 never want to put anything important in this area right here, okay? So that's why uh, the, the, uh, when the uh, thing goes to get published, this is wolf right here where they cut. So you don't ever want to have like a dialogue balloon or like half a character's face right here because it might get cut off. So keep in mind the live area in here, that is your main event, okay? So we set up a comic page, that was the boring part. Now I'm going to blow your minds. Okay, here we go. All right, so I've got my comic page and I want to make a comic and I'm ready to make a comic. Now how many of you have ever sat there trying to make a comic in real life and you got your ruler, and you got your pen, and you're trying to draw those little boxes, and you get like three boxes, yeah! You get like three boxes in, and then you're like, how do people do this for a living? This is maddening, it's no fun, right, drawing panels. Watch this. I'm going, boop, 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 boop. Down here, I've got frame border, frame border, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is click frame border, and that's going to bring up these two panels up here in my sub-tool. Create frame or cut frame board. We're going to go to create frame first. So I'm going to hit create frame. Now, up here we've got rectangle frame, polyline frame, or frame border pen. Oh, what do these do? I wonder loudly to myself and the rest of you. Oh my. Well, we're going to go ahead and choose rectangle frame for the sake of this, and I'll show you the rest. Then, down here, notice how it's pink. Well, that's because I've got this pinky purple selected down here. That's going to be the color of the border of that panel. So if you wanted your panels, like, oh, I'm talking to a ghost, and it's just the ghost in this panel, you can have blue as your panel border to represent this is his time, and a different color for whatever, or something scary, use red or yellow or whatever. Me, I'm just gonna go black because classic, right? Classic, good look, good look. So, that's the frame border. Now here, here is the important part. How to add, create a new folder. Create a new folder. I'm gonna show you this real quick. Watch this, y'all. I'm gonna come in to my live area. I'm gonna drop in here. I'm gonna pull myself a big old square. Boom. Nice, nice. Now I know what you're thinking, Amelie, you just drew a square. 
What, what even is that? That's not a comic. That's not a comic. Wait for it. If I go over to my layers, before I just had one layer. But now I've got a panel thing here. I've got a frame folder. You see that? Boom, boom, boom. Whenever you make a new panel, Clip Studio, yeah, Clip Studio Paint will make a folder for each one of those panels. So right now it's got a folder just for this one frame and inside of it is the frame and the layer beneath it for me to draw. You are automatically given a fresh layer inside of that panel. Now I'm going to show you some more on that in just a minute, but watch this. Amelie, we've only got one frame. 15 minutes, are you kidding me? Man, this thing's flying. Okay. So. But we, there's more. But wait. There's more. Order now, and I'm going to show you how to bust this bad boy into as many panels as you need. Watch this. I'm going to go back up to the top of my sub tools. Remember, sub tools is where you pick the tool you want to use. Down here in tool property is where you tell that tool what to do. So I'm going to go back to my tools, and I'm going to go to cut frame border. Watch this. I'm going to hit cut frame border, divide frame folder. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to drag. I'm going to drop, boom, now it's two panels, but wait, boom, now it's three panels, but wait, boom, 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 boom. Okay, maybe don't go that nuts, but <laughs> I just want to go see, that's your full, that's your panels, there they are, that's it. Like how long would that have taken if I sat down with a ruler and mapped out and like, all the gutters, the space in between, and how thick you want the frames to be. That is all controlled right through here. See the vertical gutter? See horizontal gutter? See that? The more I increase these, the more I reduce those, the more space I have in between. So for horizontal gutter, you see how these are like wider spaces in between? That's because I have that set to 100 right now. Vertical ones, they're closer together. That's because the vertical gutter is set at 53. See that? Uh -huh. But wait. There's more. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of these. We don't need that many. Okay, so we got three full, three panels, right? If I go back to my layers, what, 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 what? The program has given you a folder for each one of those panels. That means, let me go ahead and collapse these. If you click on that, inside there, now, I can work on this individual panel. Let me grab myself a tool real quick here. And I can go in here and I can do whatever I want inside that panel and it is literally in this layer that was made specifically for this panel. Now you can absolutely come up here and name them panel one, panel two, panel three. You'll get used to it, but I don't want to waste time showing you guys how to type. So, now the beauty of this is, watch this. If I come in here with my inking tool and I decide I'm about to get wild and crazy, you ever like sit there trying to draw a comic and you go outside the line and now you gotta pull out the white out and it's a whole thing? Yeah, watch this. Uh, 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 wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> gotta go back to my layer. There we go. I'm gonna go. Uh, 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 Look at that. It stays inside of the panel. There's literally nothing you can do in there. Let me turn that stabilization down. Oof. There's nothing you can do in here that will affect any of the rest of the page because you're drawing inside of that panel because the program gave you a layer inside the panel. What? Crazy talk. But wait, there's more. <laughs> if you want a character, like say, breaking out of a panel, let's go over to this one over here. Do you see this blue color that pops up around the panel? That's called masking. That's a mask. That just means that that's like blocking out everything else. Like anything in this light blue is like, it shall not be touched. Everything that's clear, you can, you can draw there. So, but wait, and there's more. Let's say I don't like the shape of this panel. Let's say I want to do something else with it. I'm going to head on up to this little tool right here, that little 3D cube with an arrow next to it. That's your object selector tool. That is a wonderful tool. And when I clicked it, do you see what happened here? Now I've got transformative tools, transformative handles set up around that panel. All I gotta do is grab and move 
However, I want it. See that? So you can change the shape literally just by grabbing your object selector tool. Boom. So you can make these look however you want. Let's back out of here just a little bit. Now, I'm going to show you something else. Let's go back to our frame border. Let's go back to create frame. The polyline creation is uh, basically just like any polyline tool you've ever used. I'm literally just clicking, boom, 10 minutes. Thank you, 10. So now, I literally just click the polyline shape, boom, that's a panel that has its own folder now. See that? So you can create like big, scary, like block out star shaped panels and you can have like a character's head in the center just by clicking back and forth, back and forth, boom. Now I got like a big spiky star. And once again, if I don't like the shape, I just hit object select and just play with those little controls until I dig it. Real simple. Now, same thing applies for frame border pen. I could go blah, 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 blah. boom. That's a frame. See that? Insane. Now, there's so much stuff I would love to show you guys. And once again, YouTube is your best friend. And I do stream on Twitch, not as much as I'd like to, but I do stream on Twitch. If you ever have a question, feel free to pop into that chat and let me know. As long as I'm working on my computer, I will stop what I'm doing to answer your question and show you how to do it, okay? I'm the internet's art teacher, that's what I'm there for. So, let me show you something real quick. Let's go back and make ourselves a frame. Uh, let's say it's time to do the uh, text balloons. Drawing a text balloon and getting that shape and making it look nice and fluid and it's just like, Oh, this is the best tool ever. Oh my God, that doesn't exist in real life. You gotta sit there and like draw it real carefully or like use a French curve or get like a stencil that's specifically for that. It's a whole thing. That's why people who do text for comics get paid the big bucks, okay? But for our purposes, this little program right here is like, don't even worry about it, baby. I got you, watch this. I'm gonna head on down, let me get out the way here. I'm gonna head on down back to this one over here, the generalized toolbar. And down here, almost all the way at the bottom, is a little word balloon, a dialogue balloon. I wonder what happens if I click that. Let's find out. I'm going to click that dialogue balloon. And then all, what, what just happened? It pulled up all the dialogue balloons that come preloaded in the program. What? what? So we've got rounded balloon, ellipse balloon, curved balloon, uh, balloon tails. I'll show you that in a minute. Font balloon, bl uh, balloon pin. The balloon pin is really cool because like if you come in you're like I just need like a weird like drunk that now that's a text balloon. That's a text balloon. I've got it set to fill in blue right now just so you can see the difference between the blue and the background. I just want you to be able to see that. But once again you can change whatever color you want that to be. That's the beauty of this. So once again if you have a bad guy and you want to be scary you can give him a red balloon. You know that kind of thing. So let's get rid of that. I'm just going to go with rounded balloon. Let's go ahead and just drop a balloon and play. Well, that ain't it. <laughs> Let's change that up. Let's go with line color black. Let's go ahead and just make that matte. There we go. Well, reverse. Fill color. There it is. Let's make that white. Add this one layer. That's fine. Well, I didn't want. <laughs> I'm moving quickly. I'm not being as neat as I'd like to. Okay, so there's my thought balloon. There's my dialogue. Let's say I filled it with words. Um, your text is literally just going to be right there. That's uh, your text balloon right there above it. Uh, it brings up all the different fonts. You can download new fonts. Super easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just throw it right in there. Drag and drop your fonts directly into this. Pick whatever you want. Come in here, type it in, and uh, you can copy, you can paste. You can make certain letters bigger, certain letters smaller. You have full control over the text within the balloon, but I don't want to waste time with text for you guys. Let's say we've done our text. Let's say we're happy with it. I'm going to go back to my balloons. Now I'm going to go down to balloon tail. Thought balloon tail, balloon tail, balloon tail. I'm going to go with that. Click, and out. it gives you some options. Straight line, let's find out what straight line does, or polyline, or spline, spleen, spline. I'm just going to go with a uh, straight line. I'm going to stick it inside. I'm just tapping inside my balloon. I'll drag it to where I want to go. That's actually way too small. With a tail. Here we go. 
drag that bad boy out wherever that character's face is, wherever you want to drop that tail, and let go. Boom, there it is. What? That's how easy it is. Seriously. Now watch this. If I come in here and I want to do like a thought balloon tail, I'll grab that. That's too small. That's too small. Whoop. And let's say polyline. I'm going to go, boom, there it is. Now I made those huge so you can see it, but literally just tap, 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 double tap, boom, done. That's how you get a curved line. But it gives you the thought bubbles already. It gives you all this. Now before we roll out of here, because we have five minutes left, thank you, I'm going to show you if that was too much, if that was too hard, there's an even easier way of doing this. Okay, I'm going to show you real quick. So, window, I'm going to go to window, where is it, material, here we go, the, the, the manga material, and that should be opened over here somewhere, navigator, where's my materials, they're in here somewhere. I hid my materials a million years ago and now I have a hard time getting back. You, snap to grab more, dang it, window. Window, material, illustration through. Oh, I see three poses here. The problem is finding the darn things. Dang it. Watch I go home and it just immediately pops out. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. It's in here somewhere. Nope. 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 That's navigation. Dang it. I hit it somewhere. Anyway. Material will normally, if you're not like me and you hit all your favorite palettes ahead of time, when you hit material, it's going to open up over here on this side, and it's literally all the stuff that just comes with the program, and that is pre-made comic pages. All you got to do is say, how many panels do I want? Five? Cool. It will show you all the pages it comes with, with five panels already made and loaded and ready to roll. You just literally click it drag it onto your paper and drop it, boom. You want like to see all the different dialogue balloons because it comes with hundreds of different shaped dialogue balloons like excited, scared, and hesitant, and announcement, and ghostly. You literally just grab the one you want, drag it into that uh, panel, drop it, boom. You need like a 3D posed figure. You just go to your 3D posed figures, grab the one you want, drag it onto your page, drop it, Boom, there it is. It's literally drag and drop. So, once again, I hit my materials folder. I don't know where I hit it on here. My apologies, y'all. Is it here? No. <laughs> Are you in? Is that it? No, not it. Dang it, sorry, y'all. What's anyway. that? Is it on the right hand side? On the right? For me, it's the right hand side of the page with the checkered look, the chessboard look. Uh, sometimes it hides over there, but whatever, this is, uh, <clears throat> and it's fine. So, long story short, this thing, in an hour, I've shown you very little, and that was actually a lot. Now, the thing is, this program, like I said, is just a video game. It's just a thing to play with. It's, it's, the more you wrap your head around the idea that this is just something to play with, the more you're going to gain experience playing with it. When you get this program, do not try to make your baby right away, okay? We all have that comic, we all have that baby, we all have that story that's been living in there since kindergarten, right? We want to birth it into the world. Do not start with your baby. Give yourself just a throwaway concept, play with it, treat it with no respect, just so that you can get in here and work around in the guts of this system and figure out your flow and where you like your tools and how you like it set up. Once you kind of like spend a couple months playing with it, then maybe see if you can't make yourself a final piece. Oh, you made a final piece. That's nice. Let's do like three pages. Oh, look at you. And now suddenly you're making a book. But the first thing you do is take your emotions away from it. It's just a toy. It's just a video game. Play with it. Now, everybody who starts off including myself, has a learning curve, okay? I've been working with this program for over 20 years, back when it was Black and White Manga Studio, okay? When I got it on an iPad, having never used an iPad, having never used an iPencil before, 
It took me, I'm not kidding you, six months to really feel confident working in it. And the whole time I spent six months playing, literally playing with it, what I was doing was learning how to use it as a different input device. Can I make it sit up and beg on my PC at home with just my hotkeys? You bet. It's, it's, it's disgusting how fast my hotkeys and my, my workflow goes on the PC because I've been doing it for 20 years. This, just being able to do it on a tablet, took me six months of literal play before I felt like this was something I could make finished pieces in. So give yourself the gift of grace. You'll hear me say that a lot over the course of this weekend, especially when you're doing something new. Give yourself some space. You're doing something extraordinarily brave. Most people will never even attempt, okay? So give yourself some grace. You will never make a bad drawing. Keep that in mind. Everything you do, even if you think it's the worst thing you've ever drawn, the worst comic you've ever produced, it's not bad. It's XP, okay? And every bad drawing you've ever made is a point, okay? So accrue those points, play with it, treat it with zero respect, and just remember it's a toy, and YouTube is your best friend, okay? All right, y'all, I'm going to be doing some live painting later tonight over by the art show. If you have any questions and want to come see me, feel free to, like, hit me up. I'm going to be demonstrating some painting. But thank you so much for coming, y'all. Go forth and make comments.